This video is sponsored by Jerry's Artorama. Jerry's Artorama Online has been serving artists for over 50 years, providing only the best quality art supplies. Jerry's Artorama has premier lines that sell all over the world and are used by millions of artists and professionals worldwide for amazing results. In addition to over 65,000 fine art supplies, choose from over 4,000 free art lessons, oil painting, drawing, acrylics, watercolors, mixed media, and the largest selection of new supplies professionally evaluated and created by artists for artists. Jerry's Artorama has been empowering artists since 1968. We provide reliability, better art supplies, great prices, and exceptional service. The quality of your art matters to us. Hello, everybody. Today, we are doing a stream focusing on how to draw an oil refinery in Adobe Fresco and brush pens. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at ArtProf, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. Everybody, we've got a guest artist here today. I think some of you have probably interacted with Mia Rozier on Instagram, on YouTube, so we're super excited for her to be here. So Mia, let's get going on the drawing. Let's do it. <laughs> I am using these brush pens and you know what I've realized is on brush pens, the color is never what you think it is. No, and like uh, uh, when you use so many brush pens together in an image, I like how they kind of bleed together and create all sorts of different colors. It's like kind of spontaneous. <laughs> and by the way, we would love it for all of you to draw along with us, any media you want, and to meet us in the ArtProf Discord to show us what you made. And we also have the link to the reference photo, which you see on Mia's canvas, is in the video description below. And we also have tons of other photos of the oil refinery. So if you don't like that photo, you can certainly get the images from below. And uh, Mia, we hit 100K yesterday. <laughs> I know, I'm so honored to be on the 100K uh, draw along stream. I feel so honored. <laughs> Mia, you and I were just saying that you've been with us since what, 2016? Yeah, I was in uh, RISD pre-college 2016. And then after that, I kind of was on staff for a little bit interning and now I'm here. <laughs> so it's exciting. So what were we doing back in 2016? Do you remember? I think that it was, I remember uh, doing lots of website reviews. Like you were just about to launch the Art Prof website, like the original website. And I was doing lots of reviews about that. And now we just relaunched a whole new website, which is exciting. Oh, that's so funny. That old wonky website was what you were working with before. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know that we had much going on in terms of YouTube at that point, because I think that's when I didn't understand things like at all. And I didn't realize that YouTube was gonna be the entry point for a lot of people. And I thought it was all about the website. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that is, it's, it's strange to see how much like social media influence has grown even just since 2016. Cause I don't know, I never really just browse through websites. <laughs> I always like go through Instagram or YouTube or something. I don't think anybody does. I mean, if I do look at somebody's website, it's for 10 minutes once a year. <laughs> yeah, or if I'm going to buy something, like I'll go on and I'll be like, oh, that's pretty cool. I'll buy something and then leave and never come back, <laughs> which is sad, but. Well, cause a lot of artists, they ask me like, oh, can I just sell on my website? Or I, I don't want to do social media, so can I just do the website? And I'm like, yeah, you can, but I don't really recommend it. Yeah, it's just so hard to get like traffic to, to websites alone because there's just so many of them. It's it's like one in a million chance. <laughs> so Mia, there's a little bit of a crackling noise. Is there something on your mic that's doing that? 
Um, I'm not sure. Let me move some things around. Okay, because you might be like hitting your mic. And so while you do that, I'm going to take a look at some of the comments in the chat. Gargi says 100K. Congrats. Struggling Sketcher. What a family. Mad about Holly. Hey, you all. 100K. Maya says we finally did it. Cosma says, yay, which is what I'm saying. Very cool. Seven Angelics giving us some cake, which is great. And iCode says, congratulations, but mostly congratulations on your life choices, your amazing help to so many people. Tara says, 12 a.m., I can keep myself awake for this. <laughs> Awesome, you guys. Thank you so much. This is incredible. Like, I still can't believe it, Mia. It's so crazy. Oh my God. Did the crackling noise stop? Did that fix yes. it at all? Okay, cool. Yes. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that happens with audio. And we also have a comment from Obama's Elf. I just found your channel, have been waiting to catch a stream. Thank you so much for making Art Prof. Congrats on 100K. Can't wait for a million. Well, I don't know about a million because uh, I told you guys I would dance and I don't really want to do that. <laughs> and you said it. You said it. You promised you have to. <laughs> no. But maybe at that point I will have lost all my dignity. So I won't <laughs> care. <laughs> I know that um, uh, so many people have been really excited for Jordan to try wet car uh, charcoal drawing. So oh, I feel like... <laughs> He's got to get ready for that, or if he already did it. Poor Jordan. <laughs> so Mia, have you done a lot of work like this, the architectural man-made structure stuff? Because I am really out of my element right now. Yeah, me too. I'm kind of panicking, but I'm keeping <laughs> it a secret. <laughs> well, I'm curious, what do you think is hard about drawing stuff like this? I mean, well, I was going through all of the reference images to pick one to do for today, and it was overwhelming just because there's so many parts to this oil refinery. Like, they were just, things are everywhere. I just don't know where to start. <laughs> so where did you start? Because obviously you started. <laughs> yeah, I know, I guess. Um, I just kind of started just with a border, a blue border, and now I'm just kind of going in uh, places I think are interesting. I really like this little um, uh, like house little thing in the corner. <laughs> so I'm gonna start there and just kind of work around, try to do big shapes first. Why did you do the blue thing in the back? Um, sometimes it just helps me with scale. Like if I have a border or a specific layout of things, it'll help me not make things too big or too little. I know that even just looking at this now, I know I'm going to have to make some adjustments later, but it's a good kind of place to start for me, I think. Oh, so you find that it helps you like measure? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I'm still not perfect at it as, as you could see, but um, yeah, it helps me out a little bit. That's really cool. I wish I had thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> because um, I think for a lot of people, this is really overwhelming. It, it's just so much to think about as a subject. I know. Yeah. And like, I'm so used to, like, when I go to draw something fun, like, I always go to do like portraits or or something kind of like, not easy, but that I'm used to doing. So, right. so this is just like... Uh, a challenge, but I'm excited. Well, so what I'm doing right now, I'm just doing some line work just to sketch it out. But I think what I'm going to do next is maybe just some like quick washes of like big shapes because you can get sucked into all these little staircases, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to like ignore all of those for now. <laughs> Because I know if I start doing that, I'll get so distracted. Well, I'm curious. I'm a big fan of squinting. Do you do that? I uh, need glasses, so I don't even <laughs> have to squint. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I like doing that. It kind of helps focus uh, on certain big shapes instead of details. 
So I have to ask everybody in the audience, because we hit 100K, when did you find Art Prof? What year and how did you find us? What was the video or experience that got you to find us? Because I'm always really curious about that. Because um, Mia, you've got quite a following on Instagram. Is that mostly how people find you? Yeah, most of the time. I mean, it was kind of strange. I I normally get, uh, or not normally, but uh, a year ago, I got a nice shout out from like a bigger account. Uh, and so I got some followers from that. And then afterwards, I got kind of a, vic a video on TikTok did really well so i got some people in from there too but it's such like a lottery system you kind of get attention and then you don't get attention so it's just i'm still trying to figure it out <laughs> i think we all are right so i'm curious um what was the site that you said you blew up on a little bit Oh, that was um, TikTok. Uh, my little siblings introduced me to it uh, through quarantine. And, oh, um, really? Yeah, because I was not on it before then. And then quarantine just made me so bored. So I was like, I guess I'll just go on TikTok now. <laughs> but oh. um, it's pretty fun. There's some good stuff on there. But there's also some really uh, just obnoxious stuff on there. So you have to sort out the bad and the good. <laughs> I don't know if people here know, but we just started on TikTok and Mia has posted a bunch of amazing videos that I would have taken a million years to make because I don't know TikTok and I'm still trying to figure it out. So if, if you see stuff on our TikTok, I am not responsible. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> all of the blame goes on me. <laughs> Crap, now everybody knows the secret is out. <laughs> So you're blocking in like big shapes of color? Yeah, yeah. I'm just kind of like holding my breath over here and trying a bunch <laughs> of things. <laughs> well, I find the stuff like this, the, the big like washers of color, they're pretty important. I know, because I feel like without that, uh, all of the little details, they won't really have anything to be grounded to. Like, they won't really have anchor points that, like, I like establishing all the big anchor points beforehand so that I don't have to redo all of the little things later on. So, Mia, I'm going to rip you off and I'm going to do the blue background. <laughs> Yay! Okay, that's great. <laughs> Woohoo! Well, sometimes on these streams, it's awesome because I'll see the other person do something and I'm like, I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. I like doing that too. <laughs> Except a lot of the time I get so into my own drawing that I don't even like look up for the whole time, which is not oh, good. That too. Yeah, yeah, I totally do that. Mareka says, I met you in the spring of 2020 when looking for information on oil painting. And Cospa says, I recommended you to every class since then. I'm sure some of my students also follow. At the time, I had no idea how this channel would impact my practice. So thank you. Wow, wonderful. And Shell says, around April, just started with, quote, self-teaching me art when I found your curriculum for self-taught artists. Rita just found us a couple weeks ago with the anatomy videos. Alisa says, can't remember, know exactly which video it was. It was Alex talking about gouache. And Taj says, I was sitting human anatomy on YouTube, which is funny, Mia, because the anatomy videos haven't been doing that well, number wise, and I can't really figure it out. I'm like, maybe it's my thumbnail, I don't know. Maybe people, uh, a few people come for the anatomy, but then they stay for the Hugh Jackman content. <laughs> 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 Maybe that's why. <laughs> I actually think it might be because it's a little bit academic because I do it from a luxury point of view. I mean, we have videos where I do both, but the anatomy anatomy videos, just too much to cover. Yeah, I also think that like, when I was going into art school, I was like, ooh, anatomy is gonna be so fun. It's just gonna be like drawing people all the time. Like it's gonna be so good, but you don't realize how much like, 
stuff there is to know. <laughs> like there's just so much stuff that you have to like, it's kind of like, uh, what is it? I guess like a science class more than an art class. It is, and it's a lot to process for people. So I can see that would be the case, like just making the assumption that, oh, it's just about drawing. I'm like, no, you got to know all this stuff first. Uh, <laughs> learning anatomy is like one of the craziest things. Like I've taken so many classes and still I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> I'll try my best. Did you ever take the artistic anatomy class at RISD? No, but some of my friends have. My friend actually, my roommate, uh, he was doing uh, that class and he had to draw elbows for homework like every week. So every week we'd be like, oh, how's your elbow coming this week? And he'd be like, it's great. So <laughs> it's just like, it seems monotonous, but uh, now he's a lot better off, which is cool. Oh, I bet. I mean, I don't think you need to know every single muscle name, but wow, it is so helpful when you're drawing the figure to actually know what you're looking at. Yeah, seriously. Oh my gosh, your color palette is so different than mine. <laughs> oh my God, you're right. <laughs> That's exciting though. I like that. I like that. When we were drawing um, like fish and crabs in some of our other streams, that's like so exciting. <laughs> well, I like seeing the two different approaches to the same media. I mean, same subject. Also, I think it's definitely like a uh, medium thing. Like for if I was using markers, I would be using a totally different color palette, I feel like, than just like an iPad. Well, I find that sometimes it just really depends on the colors that are available. I don't know if you guys know this, but I actually have my brush pens. They're organized <laughs> by colors. So, so these are like the dark muted colors. These are the light colors. And these are the super bright saturated colors. And I just can't organize if I don't have that in advance. I never organized my brush pens when I had them. It was just crazy. I would open my bag and they would just be like all in my bag in just like one section. It was like a mess. I mean, you're really into brush pens, although I still feel like I've seen a lot on your Instagram lately. It seems like you've been doing more digital. Yeah, it's weird. I think because some of my brush pens, a lot of them, I uh, kind of burned through them. So, and then I just <laughs> never bought more. <laughs> But yeah, I used to love doing brush pen stuff like in my sketchbook all the time. It was really fun. It is a pain that they burn out so fast. Not as fast as Copic markers though, in my experience. Copic markers, I would use like one black marker to do one image and then it would be like dead. <laughs> it's <was> terrible. <sighs> That's the worst, sheesh. Although, you can get refills, but they're expensive. I know, that's the problem. I just hate spending money on art materials. Ugh. Oh, I know, it really adds up over time. Emma says, I subscribed a couple of years ago, but didn't start watching until last summer. I saw the taped banana <laughs> debate. <laughs> that was really fun. <laughs> so Mia, we have a question here. Thoughts about foam tip versus brush tip brush pens. Brett, I'm going to assume that you mean Copics versus brush pens, although correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so Mia, what's the difference for you between the Copics and the brush pens I'm using right now? For me, um, I love, when I whenever I make any kind of art, I like kind of moving from light to dark or like soft strokes to harder strokes. Um, and with Copic markers or with like felt tip markers, like Crayola or something like that, it, it feels like you can't really, you don't really have it much leeway unless it's kind of a half burnt out marker. So, um, I like using brush pens because it feels like I can ease into it more. I feel like I can use it almost as like a paintbrush or like watercolor almost and like blend it out with like the blenders and stuff which I know you can do with Copics as well, but um, I just find it easier to use brush pens and they're less expensive. So <laughs> that's exciting. 
I'm the same way. I don't really like the Copics that much. And yet everybody raves about how incredible they are. Yeah, I, I, they're not overrated because like the things that people do with them are crazy. But for me, I just, I don't know. I've never really been super into them. You know what it is for me? I don't like <clears throat> how floppy the tip is. Yeah, it's, it feels, I don't know. It just, it never really felt natural to me. It always felt like kind of weird. I don't know. I mean, I do think that they have an amazing way of blending. It's crazy the way that they blend, but I just don't blend that much with my work. Yeah, I think like I've seen a really like cool character design stuff with with Copics that I would actually kind of like to try because it's really specific kind of a look. But um, other than that, I don't know. I like my cheap, <laughs> I like my cheap markers that I can get at Michael's with a coupon. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know something? I sort of like the brush pens when they're a little bit old because they're great for sketching. Have you noticed that? Oh yeah, yeah. I would that I would like literally take a piece of paper and just like kind of wear down my marker a little bit before I even started using it like for serious art cuz I love how they look when they're like half empty. I think it's really nice. Well, you know what's cool about them is they have this inconsistency to the line, which I actually think is very beautiful because it's not a very clean line. Man, the marker brushes on the iPad are not as good. They, they'll never be as good as the real Oh thing. yeah? Yeah, I've tried, but I don't know. I like using the watercolor brushes, but um, yeah, the markers, it's hard to replicate. So you like the watercolor in Adobe Fresco more? Yeah, and I really like the pencil tool. Like I, I go between the watercolor and then the pencil to like uh, refine details. I find that that's like a pretty good balance. Cool. And Hot Spring Roll says, I love the unblended look too. Gives the piece a lot of character. Yeah, blending is not everything. I mean, it's, it's nice to do it in some areas, but haven't you seen that sometimes, at least for me, I have a tendency to overblend and then everything gets mushy. Yeah, yeah, that can happen. <laughs> I've had to like throw away so many pieces where I'm like, I go crazy with the blending and then I'm like, I don't even know what this is anymore. <laughs> I know it turns to mush. By the way, I'd like to know who here is drawing along with us because this is not easy and I will be very impressed by people who actually give this a shot. <laughs> Mia, have you ever tried this? I'm using a water brush to like activate the marker. That's cool. I've never tried a water brush before, but I've tried like, I know for Tombow, they have the like blending brush. That's kind of just like a neutral thing. I've used that before, but I've never used a water brush. Well, so this is what Mia's talking about. If you don't know, these are these clear blending brushes and they're really, really fun. But I like the water brush because you can get really, really watercolory, whereas the blending tip is just a lot stiffer, like it's not gonna flow in the same way. Ooh, I did not expect that orange to be so bright. <laughs> That's annoying. I don't like that. You could just like add uh, like graffiti or like neon <laughs> signs or something. <laughs> It'll I be fun. Could. So do you ever look at these things and you're like, how does this thing work? People work here. People do things like this just looks like so random. All the pipes. I know. Like I always think of like, how did they make this? Like, how did they build all this stuff? <sighs> Uh, I, I props to architecture people because like, I don't, there's just so much planning involved in everything. I don't know how they do it. Yeah. It's really mind boggling. Cause some of the pipes you look at them and you're like, does that work? <laughs> What's I that mean, <laughs> I'd hope they do. That's true. It would be bad if they did not work at the oil refinery. 
You are so fast. How did you get all that covered? Oh my God. <laughs> because I'm not, I don't have like a big physical paper. I have like a little fake universe in my iPad that I can manipulate. <laughs> <sighs> Jealous. <laughs> I should go digital. Maybe I should just. Uh. I have to keep practicing traditional though, because I tried to do a watercolor painting from life the other day. It did huh. not work out. <laughs> oh, I'm really? so what used... was hard? Well, I went to it's cool. In uh in Rhode Island, I went to um the beach where they filmed um what's it called? Uh, a scene from Moonrise Kingdom, like the little crescent moon beach in the Wes Anderson movie. So that uh -huh. was really fun and it's really beautiful. So I brought a little palette and watercolors to go um, paint there. And it was just like failure after failure. <laughs> I could not get the colors right. Uh, it was so sad, but it was beautiful. It was a fun day, even though it was like a bad art day. You know what? I know somebody in that movie. Really? Which, which person? <laughs> I've never seen the movie, but it's Becky, the switchboard operator. Hmm. It's been a while since I've seen it, so I, I don't recognize that character by name, but that's that's cool. That movie is pretty it was, good. It was a very small role. I mean, it wasn't like a main character or anything. But... um. What was I going to say about, oh, so <laughs> you want some tea? On some yeah. Of <laughs> yeah, 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 of course I do. <laughs> Apparently, Edward Norton is not very nice. Uh-oh. <laughs> Please explain. <laughs> Just didn't want to interact at all. Just yeah. did his job and that was it. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I mean, he must be tired, you know, probably. <laughs> no, but it's sort of that I'm more important than you. Oh, yeah, we don't. That's not good. That's never good. <laughs> and apparently Tilda Swinton is the sweetest person. I believe that. She seems like a nice lady. <laughs> Even though she's so creepy. <laughs> I know. It's so it's oh, man, I uh God, Tilda Swinton is uh, like kind of an inside joke between me and my friend, <laughs> just because she's such a strange character. We're always just talking about Tilda Swinton. <laughs> well, I think that she's very interesting because she can look very contemporary, but she's also looking, she looks great in historical stuff too, you know? She Here. just has like such a like way of changing how she looks. Like all of her different looks are so different, but they're all so thorough and like put together. It's crazy. Plus she was in Doctor Strange. So no. With Benedict. Benedict. <laughs> Benedict. <laughs> Although, did you see, I don't know when this came out. It was this movie with Jodie Foster. It's called The Mauritanian. It's about Guantanamo Bay, this true oh. story. Did you see that? I haven't seen that, but that sounds really interesting. It is, but Benedict is in that movie and there's so many problems. First of all, he has an American accent, which I don't like that. That's <laughs> not cool. And he sort of has a mustache and that's kind of gross. Yeah. Yeah, that's never, that's never good. <laughs> Oh, this is great, Mia. Elisa says, Tilda Swinton has the vibe of an ancient vampire that accidentally became an actress. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It was so funny. Like, I remember on online, like, there was this image about, like, celebrities that people think are immortal, like, that have been around forever. And it's, like, Tilda Swinton, Jeff Goldblum, um, and, like, Eric Andre like a bunch of different people that like people just theorize have been around forever. And I think Tilda Swinton totally has that vibe. <laughs> oh yeah. She's totally immortal. Don't you think? Oh yeah. 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 yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> so Mia, what are you doing about all the freaking straight lines? Are you actually trying to make them straight or are you uh, making it gestural or? <laughs> I'm just kind of like rolling with it. <laughs> Like, just kind of, yeah, I'm making it kind of gestural. I don't really use tools that much when I do digital, which I, I, I mean, 
I don't know, people recommend it, but I just kind of like using my hand. Um, but it's kind of funny, this past semester, I was in a digital class and my professor actually told me that most of my drawings were on a slant, like, um, <laughs> cause I think like I use my right hand, so it's always like slanted a little bit to like the right or something, but I never noticed it until he said it. And then I was like, oh my God, that's ridiculous. Well, because I was gonna ask you if you were gonna make rectangles or, cause you can do that in fresco, right? Yeah, you can do that. I just have never really like been interested in doing that, but it could make your life a lot easier. <laughs> well, why are you not interested? I'm curious. I don't know. I just kind of, I love drawing like in my sketchbooks and stuff. Um, and like just kind of, it has a more traditional feel. Uh, and I mm -hmm. kind of like being a more traditionally digital artist. If, if that makes sense. That sounds so, that sounds so like pretentious, but I swear I'm not trying to be that way. It's just like how I kind of like to work, I guess. I mean, it makes sense. I, because you started on, or, or did you not, did you start with digital? What was your first material? Uh, I'd say just like pencil and paper like pencil and okay. paper and then I did a little bit of watercolor and then and then I kind of started doing digital stuff. Um. Well, the reason I'm asking is because my kids are all digital. I mean, they rarely pick up a pencil and I think that that's really different than the way we I grew up. Yeah, that's like, that's so cool though. Like they, they totally are just learning a new kind of like illustrative language, like when they're like so young, it's really a good skill to have. Brian is asking, what materials are you using? So I am using, these are called Tombow dual brush pens. And actually we did list all the links and names of the art supplies in the video description. And then the water brush, this one's Faber-Castell. This one is Pentel. I mean, they're the same basically. And then the paper that I'm using, this is actually a watercolor block because I'm going to put water brush on it later. And it's Windsor Newton. So yeah, you can check that out in the video description. Jane says, coming in today, I was curious to see if Clara would use a ruler or other straight edge for all the pipes. I hate rulers. Do you? I hate them. I hate them because all the time, uh, like I, oh man, I hate them. Cause I always end up like dragging, my ruler's covered in like paint and like <laughs> stuff. So like I always get my drawing all dirty and it's just like, I don't know, annoying. <laughs> well, I just feel like if I'm gonna do the ruler, I have to do it on everything. Like I can't just do it in one spot because it makes everything else look wrong. Yeah, I agree. I think like for me, I'm totally like the le like the least amount of materials I need, the better. Because then it's just like easy. Well, I agree with that. I think it's overwhelming to have too many tools, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I think so. I think like you have to start with kind of the bare minimum and then you like add things as you go and then it just becomes easy the more you do it. I, I think that's really the case with paints because I remember when I first started painting, I had so many colors and it really screwed with me. Yeah, I only really use like four colors. I use like yellow, uh, blue, red and like a peachy color sometimes, but normally that's it. <laughs> Maria says, do you ever get concerned about focusing too much on one kind of media and quote, forgetting others? I think about it and I panic because I have so many types of materials. Any thoughts, Mia? Yeah, I mean, I was feeling that way this week because I was trying to do like my watercolor stuff at the beach and I was like, did I forget how to use this medium? Like, I just have been doing other things. Um, but I think you never really forget. I think, um, I don't know. I don't be stressed out. Like, it's more of like a practice kind of thing. Like you, you bring everything from every different medium to all the other mediums. So the more that you learn, the more kind of stylistically you grow, I think. 
I think that's true because I think that every media that you use, <clears throat> it's another tool that you understand. And while it might feel like it gets in the way, I actually think you're right. I think it enhances your experience. Yours looks so nice and gestural. I feel jealous. No, it's <laughs> like, uh, I, I feel like ugh, I'm just uh, trying not to make it into like a blurry mess right now. <laughs> uh, no, what you mean? I mean, this is not easy to do. Because uh, every time I'm like, oh, I've made some good progress. I'm like, oh, God, look at all of the other things that I haven't done yet. Well, it's one of those things you ever clean your living space and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna clean this one thing. And then as you're clean, you're like, this is dirty. And so is this, and so is this. <laughs> you just find everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Worst. Oh, this is interesting. Soyton Lee, who works in architecture, I know, I would imagine architects have very little impact on doing an oil refinery. It's got to be all driven by engineers. Oh. That makes sense. That makes sense. I like don't know the correct terms for anything these days. Oh no. Rachel says, I was going to draw along, but instead I'm making a quick card for my dad for Father's Day. That is important, Rachel. That's like, yeah, that's better than drawing this oil refinery. <laughs> Seven Angelic says, Mia, I love your colors. The tower thing is making me think of a root beer float for some reason. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> root beer float uh, refinery. That's great. Wilmy says, I found you in 2020 watching several drawing videos. Art Prof popped up. Since then, I am hooked. Angie says, I was looking for crits and things online to listen to and watch, found the site and listened to the old audio crits. Mia, do you ever listen to YouTube almost like a podcast? Um, I like listening to podcasts. So I, I would like, <laughs> you know, I'll go like listen to a podcast. Sometimes I will. I actually haven't been on YouTube that much um, this year. Uh, like except for art prof stuff. But I remember in high school, I would literally put on the art prof portfolio critiques in the background, like when I was making dinner and stuff, when I was making my portfolio, that was like my nightly routine. That's great. I know you're like really into podcasts and the podcasts, you did some of that art. What was it for my favorite murder? Yeah, I listened to a bunch of kind of true crime podcasts. So um, my favorites are my favorite murder and last podcast on the left. So I've done some fan art for both of them and they reposted them. So it's that's really exciting because it's kind of like a podcast celebrity shout out, which is fun. Oh, that was so cool. You know what my dream is, Mia? What? I want you, Jackman, to repost me. Oh my God, that we should do like, we should have a like pipe dream for like when that happens, what we should do. <laughs> well, the, the real question is what do I do to get him to repost me, right? Yeah, without coming on too strong. You have to be like subtle about it. Oh uh, man, drop ideas down in the, in the chat maybe. What should we do to get Hugh Jackman's attention? <laughs> Actually, I think I freaked out Ari Shapiro. Like, <gasps> oh no! Screwed it up. <laughs> I did this stream, the not stream, I did this Instagram story the other day. I was explaining my tears of hot white men, although Dev Patel might make it. So in that case, I'll just be my white men. But uh, <laughs> I wrote something about how Ari Shapiro has so much journalistic integrity because he's so smart and witty but also hot. And so therefore he's not really in my volleyball team, my hypothetical volleyball team, because he's just so smart. And I feel mm -hmm. like he should belong somewhere else. <laughs> and he didn't like that. <laughs> no, it's not that he didn't like it. 
But I just was like, ah, oh, shoot. I probably <laughs> should not have posted that. You know, I mean, if it was a story, then it's like gone already. So it doesn't even matter. I did do a story on, on just him a long time ago. And it was about, it was some lesson. I think it was about brainstorming. And he did repost that. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> That's so exciting. Whenever uh, you feel so seen, like when when people repost you. I mean, I think that's what the internet is all about. I think people don't feel seen. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm noticing all of the mistakes from my original sketch, which is the best part of any drawing. <laughs> What are all your mistakes? I don't feel like I see any. Oh, <laughs> uh, just like the like proportions of like the tower and stuff. They're not super bad, but like the further I get, like the more mistakes I find. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I know the feeling. I'm just drawing blind right now. I'm not trying to make anything look great. I mean, I'll probably step back at some point and realize crap. <laughs> this is bad. But I guess for me right now, I'm just trying to fill the page because I don't feel like I can do anything until I have everything locked in. Mm -hmm. Katya says, well, now that you said it on stream, that story technically isn't gone. It ever will be. Oh, no. That's true. Oh, that's You're true. welcome, Claire. <laughs> oh, no. Rita is asking, how many weekly practice hours would you call the optimal amount? What do you think, Mia? I don't know. I mean, I don't really know in terms of hours, but um, I don't know. I'd say like a few a few drawings a week. I, I always try not to like pressure myself to get things done because then I know I'll never do it. Like I'll feel too stressed out. So like, I'd say just like try and get like a few, a few drawings down every week, maybe. Well, Rita, I think it depends on what you're trying to do because like Mia, you're in art school right now. And so you really have almost the smorgasbord of projects, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like a big kind of uh, patchwork schedule <laughs> full of a bunch of random things. Do you ever find that hard to deal with? Yeah, yeah, because I get um, artist burnout a lot where like I'll do something and then I'll be like, I can't do anything ever again. Like I've already done something. <laughs> so mm -hmm. like that's been that's been pretty hard with school because they just always like every single class expects like the highest quality work every time. So it's just a lot of pressure sometimes. I mean, I feel like you've been having such a great time with your personal stuff, which is unusual for somebody in art school. Yeah, I think maybe it's just like uh, I'm taking all the stress of assignments I don't want to do and just like procrastinating with things I do want to do. But I think that's really good practice for when you get out of school, you know? I'm hoping so. Yeah, I'm kind of like getting more and more excited, which I think is a good thing. It's better than being like terrified. Oh, it, I mean, I was terrified. I was like, what? am I gonna do when I graduate? And I think that you working on TikTok now and building your Instagram following, it's like, you won't have to start from ground zero when you get out. Yeah, like, and that's what uh, my friends and I are all trying to build like social media stuff because better start, like, it feels so hard to like begin, but you just gotta remember that like a year from now, it'll be better than it was. <laughs> so I'm just trying to keep that in the back of my head. Well, you know what I've noticed, like, especially for things like, okay, say you're building a website, okay? People think that, oh, well, I should have all my work looking amazing and I, I can't start a website until all my work is as good as I want it to be. And I'm like, it's never going to be as good as you want it to be. So you might as well just throw it up right now. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I think like there's never going to be the right time to do it. Like you just got to make it, you got to make the time. <laughs> 
Also, I think people don't realize that a website is an ongoing work in progress. I mean, it's never done. Yeah, like you can always edit stuff. You can always, and like, I think you have to learn through the process too. So like, might as well learn when you're still in school or like, or when you're not doing the thing that you really want to do yet. So then when you are, you aren't making like the same mistakes you would be. Oh no, I accidentally exited. <laughs> Come back. So Jared Krasowska, who wrote Lunch Lady, do you know those books? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Um, he's coming on a stream in July, which we're super, super excited about. But you know what he did in school, which I thought was just so smart? That is exciting. Yeah. So he said that he, quote, wanted to get what? his rejections out of the way. And so he did <laughs> a whole bunch of queries when he was a student so he could, quote, get them out of the way. And I just thought that was so smart. That's right? the best. Yeah, that's really smart. Like, cause you, uh, I wish, that's like some courage that you have to have <laughs> to do that. Yeah. Cause I think- Well, a lot too, of like, people would say, I don't want to like put it out there. It's not good enough. And I'm like, it never will be. Yeah. And I think a lot of the time, like in school too, people are like, oh, well, if I fail, then like, I'll never be good. Like I'll never succeed if I fail once. So then like you never try, but you know, all the sayings about failing so you can succeed later. <laughs> and also I think getting used to the rejection, because I know some people like they'll send out their first thing and then they call me like, oh my God, I didn't get it. I'm like, this is the road, okay? This is not new. Yeah. Uh... Maria says, looking at Clara's now, I don't think it would look so cool with the pen texture had she used rulers. Cool. I mean, I just, I'm not a fan of all those straight edges. It's so hard. I know. And it's like, I feel like it takes like three times the amount of time that it would, like setting it up for every line. <laughs> it's crazy. HT Pokepack says, when drawing from reference, how much of it should be stylized? versus how much should be copied verbatim? It's a question for you, Mia. Ooh, um, well, I like kind of going in at the beginning and trying to make it like a little bit accurate, like with colors and stuff. And then as I get more comfortable in the drawing, I'll kind of just like tweak some things. And I think stylistic wise, it should be kind of whatever comes naturally to you. Like I like kind of making things a bit like wonky, like not as straight, not as like, um, I don't know, rigid. So that's probably what it's, it's not going to be a super rigid architectural thing. <laughs> I think to answer your question, HT poke pack, it depends on what you want. I mean, maybe you do want something that's really accurate looking and, and maybe you do want something super stylized. So I think it does help in advance just to say, well, what am I really after here? Do I want it really stylized? Do I want it more real looking? It's, it's a matter of personal taste. Have you noticed, Mia, there's a lot of purple? I know. I know. I'm trying to like sort out all the different purples. <laughs> it's cool though. It actually makes our jobs a little easier than if like everything was gray. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Gray is boring. We like purple instead. Yes, purple. We have a comment from Kitsu Yomi. It's about how much mileage you get from practicing observation. You can learn way more out of one long drawing compared to 10 quick drawings if you dedicate enough focus on it. Although, I will also say, those quick drawings are awesome because they light a fire under your butt. <laughs> Do you like quick drawings, Mia? Oh yeah, I'm like definitely a work fast kind of person. Like I try and get as much stuff out as possible. So when I do have to do like the long drawings, I'm always like get 
frustrated and bored. <laughs> it's not the best. But you know what else too, Mia, is I think that some people equate a good drawing with how long you spend on it. And I don't think that's always true. Yeah, I don't think that's true either. I think like um, people have different skills and some people are just really good at like devoting a ton of time to stuff. And like, that's more of like a personal skill and an art skill. Not, It's not like just an artist thing. It's like a personal achievement <laughs> in a way. And, you know, sometimes I find that my better drawings are the best ones. Some Sometimes the ones that take really long, take really long because I spent too long in them and they get tired looking. And so it's, it's not always a guarantee because you spend more time on it that's going to be better. Yeah, that's a good point. So people in the chat, <clears throat> tell us what your experience is. Have you found that the length of time influences the outcome of your piece? Are your longer drawings better? Are your gestural drawings better? Which one is it? Curious. We have a question from Brian. I have a hard time drawing buildings and structures. How do I get better at these things? Tips, Mia. I mean, that's a great question. I'm trying to figure that out right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'd say just like thinking about it as like, I don't know, as, as a like an object rather than a giant structure might help because it, it seems a bit more manageable in that way. <laughs> like rather than thinking of it as a giant monster with a ton of different parts, you can kind of break it down into a bunch of little pieces that fit together. That's kind of what I'm trying to do. I think what helps me is to really simplify it in the beginning because Mia, there's like a million guardrails and I'm just not even drawing them right now. I know, like I'm not, I'm not either. I'm gonna add them at the end. <laughs> yeah. And so I think a lot of it is just seeing past details because it's really easy to look at this photo and just be like, oh my God, there's so many details. I gotta put them all in. If I don't put them all in, it's not gonna look good. But you have to resist that temptation, I think. Yeah. And by the way, everybody, we still have plenty of time left in the stream, but we are doing a stage session in the Discord after this, and you'll get to talk to Mia and I on voice, which is so fun. Tara says, drawing that would only take me less than an hour <clears throat> are typically better, just like Prof said. If I take too much time on a piece, it just ends up a muddy mess. I agree with that. Um, Cause I sometimes like I'll get a lot of stuff done. And then if I try and work on it for a long, long time it'll get like weird and rigid. And like, I don't like that. I like when things are kind of like quick with like life in them. Not that drawings that take a long time don't have that but <laughs> just for me personally. Yeah, it's all about your personal way of working. I mean, nobody works exactly the same. And so that's why I'm always telling you guys, listen, don't just learn from us, learn from many different people. I mean, I'm sure you've experienced that in art school, right? Oh yeah, like every every professor is so different and like uh, people love and hate different ways of teaching and different ways of drawing. And I think like ultimately it just comes down to like what you kind of, love <laughs> which sounds really cheesy but you know well i think some of it is learning how to sort through all the stuff because it is a lot to process you're like oh i could do it like this or i could do it like this and it's like okay which one do i pick yeah and it is kind of fun though after you learn about all that stuff is that you could be like haha it's my choice now like i get to choose between <laughs> all these different things <laughs> Oh, for sure. I think once you can take that time and step back, it's awesome. 
Oh, so Mia, how's the tarot card stuff going? If, if you guys missed it, you should watch the stream that we did with Mia for her successful Kickstarter campaign. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that was such a fun stream. The tarot stuff is going well. Uh, like a lot of the rewards are starting to come in, which I'm really excited about. Um, I'm just waiting on the decks to come in so I could actually like ship those. And shipping de delays are pretty bad right now. But other than oh, that, yeah. things ha seem to be going smoothly, which is good. And then where are the cards going to be available for sale? Like if somebody missed the campaign. Ooh, I'll be selling all the extra decks through my shop, um, which is just arosier.com. You could find that through my Instagram too, if, if people are interested. But um, And then after that, I'm so excited. The deck got picked up by US Games. So it'll be sold like in stores, which is like crazy in, in, in uh, due time, but I'm excited. Oh my God, that's crazy. I know, I like can't believe it. You, you're like a, a one woman entrepreneurial empire. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm a, uh, uh, people are calling it like girl boss now. Like I'm a girl boss, <laughs> but it's like a, it's like a joke. It's stupid, but. <laughs> Is that what they're calling it? It's like some kind of weird, like joke now, like. People are making fun of like girl bosses, but I don't know. It's some like weird layer joke, who knows? <laughs> well, they said that because of the pandemic that a lot of women actually started entrepreneurial businesses that they never had time to do because a lot of them lost their permanent jobs, which is terrible, but it, it's sort of cool that it got a lot of people to rethink that. I know, I think that is really cool and like, yeah, I think it did kind of working from home, you are able to like actually think about business like stuff like, oh, I can actually run a business from my home. Like maybe that's a better like use of my time. So I think that's awesome. Well, especially if you have kids, it's like so, so hard. <laughs> I can only imagine. I can't like, I'm, I might be getting a bunny soon. So I'm so excited. I can only imagine like how difficult my life's gonna get just with a bunny, let alone a child. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, bunnies don't talk back to you, Mia. They do bite though. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> That's true, my kid has never bitten me before. All right, so Mia, now you have to tell me because I'm raising teenagers. What's the meanest thing you ever did to your parents? Oh no, oh my God. I was a really mean 15 year old. Uh, like I was you were? so mean. I was so like, uh, I was just so angry. Like I was totally like listening to my ear, like my music on my little iPod Nano, like all the time I didn't want to be bothered. So I think just an overall attitude problem. <laughs> like. <sighs> just for like a couple years, but I'm better now. So that's good. So I need to wait till they're like, what, 25? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. That's only uh, 10 more years. <laughs> no more than that, actually. I've got a 12 year old. Oh boy. Karen says, you need to start somewhere, Mia. Bunnies seem like a good place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm so excited. I've already met the bunny because my, my younger sibling got two bunnies to try and bond them because I like they, um, like I guess bunnies love being in pairs. So, but they didn't really bond very well. So we think that the oh. bunny that I might get might be better as just like uh, an alone bunny. Like, so I'm excited. I'm just gonna take him back <laughs> to school. So you said rabbits bond? Yeah, I guess like my my family's been learning so much about it, but um, like I guess they get really depressed if they're alone, but uh, oh. some rabbits prefer to be alone. So we think that these two that are trying to bond, it's just not really working out. So it might be better to separate them. Oh, so complicated that's... animal stuff. <laughs> I know. Well, we have three guinea pigs. You all know that. So we have yeah. Fluffy for, I mean, we still have Fluffy. <laughs> He's still around. And then we got Jub Jub and Wheat together. I don't know if they're related, but they are definitely bonded. Like, uh, I do this thing 
where I bring one of the guinea pigs to one of my kids and I just let the guinea pig like go into the room, okay? But we won't do that. He just stands there. He won't mm. go into the room by himself. But if Jub Jub is there, he follows Jub Jub into the room. That's really sweet. <laughs> uh -huh. He needs Jub Jub there to like tell him where to go. Reem is asking, what's your zodiac sign? I am a Gemini. How about you, Mia? I'm a Capricorn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sad. Like, my birthday is January 3rd, uh, January 3rd, 2000. So I could have been like the, uh, what is it? Like millennium baby. Like I could have been born January <sighs> 1st, 2000, which would have been crazy, but I missed it by two days. So sad. <sighs> Crap. <laughs> Ooh, I guess I better start putting in the details. I, I haven't even thought about that. Yeah, I think it's time. I'm like, so, like, I'm just, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I'm just like puttering around. Ugh. Well, what else is there to do, you know? <laughs> I think something like this, though, like, it's so hard to make a fast drawing, like, of something like this. Like, this is something that would take me a long time to, like, get get really well <laughs> well here's a question i mean obviously we have to end the stream at some point but how detailed would you get in theory if you had like tons of time to work on it that's a good question um i'm not sure i mean i'd probably try and like zoom in and like get the textures and stuff for um for like the different walls and things like that which oh i i love your your texture on the um the bottom of the, like the red part <laughs> on the oh, bottom. So That's so nice. Oh my gosh. Well, because have you seen, I don't know if this is an Instagram thing, but I don't know, every time I pop up Instagram, you know how it shows you like suggested posts and stuff like that? Yeah. It's always showing me these like absurdly detailed architectural pen drawings. Is that just like an online thing? Well, it's kind of cool because like on Instagram, you have access to like everything. <laughs> so yeah. like there's definitely different like communities and stuff that like uh, really holds architecture stuff in high regard, like or detail stuff in high regard. So you'll stumble upon that. But I like uh, like gestural kind of loose, crazy stuff. <laughs> I mean, I admire the patience it takes to draw like that, but me personally, oh, I have no patience. Yeah, uh, it's bad. <laughs> I just like throwing things like into the void. Like I'll just be like, okay, done, next. <laughs> I get bored <laughs> so easily. But you know, sometimes that's a good thing because it lets you not linger and, and fuss. That's true. Because I definitely have caught myself just like fussing over stuff like crazy. And I'm like, this is not necessary. <laughs> and like, it's, it just, why stress yourself out? You're <laughs> like, I, right. I, I, whenever I start getting like really stressed about something, I know it's time to like take a break or move on. <laughs> oh, for sure. I mean, who, who here, tell us in the chat, gets stressed <laughs> when they're making their work? It can be hard. It's not a good thing. I think it can be very hard. But I do think it's inevitable. Yeah. Uh, that's why, like, when I went to art school, a bunch of my family members were like, oh, like, what if doing it in school and making it a job, like, turns it into something stressful for you? Like, instead of it being something you like. And I think... That has happened a little bit, but like keeping time and room for like actual like relaxing drawings and stuff versus like the stressful things. I'm still trying to find that balance though. I mean, what work relaxes you? Is, is there a type of work you make when you're trying to not stress? I think it's just like, I don't know, I'll, I'll wake up one morning and be like, oh, I'd really like to draw like some like a, 
uh, I don't know, like I, I like to illustrate this poem or like this song that I like, but I don't have time because I have to do homework. But like doing the work that I uh, like come up with on my own is kind of relaxing to me versus like I an mean, assignment. I, I know a lot of people find fan art very relaxing. I guess because the work is already, it's not done for you, but it's like, you don't have to like create a character from scratch. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh my gosh. I feel like the perspective in this is just like a mess. <laughs> oh, I gave up on the perspective. I'm like, dude, not happening. Yeah. This is not something I wanna deal with. But you know what? We're doing it. We're getting it we done. <laughs> and another thing, too, I sort of think you have to either decide to do the perspective or just screw it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's true. <laughs> because I think the issue is if you're going to do perspective and it's like one thing is off, it's like it really shows. Okay, I will admit it's really fun to put in these details because I waited so yeah. long. Yeah, <laughs> it's like satisfying. Oh my God, you got so much done. Whoa, that is amazing. Well, so, so did you, I mean. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> I mean, you're a pretty fast artist, don't you think? I would say so. Um, yeah, I would say so. A lot of the time I'm just kind of like, ah, like until I finish it. <laughs> so I kind right. of just like black out and then it's done somehow. Actually, I'm surprised I'm getting a lot of detail with the water brush. Like you wouldn't think it would give you that much detail, but it's actually pretty good. I think that's like another kind of pro for the uh, like water or whatever brush tip uh, pens because uh -huh. you can get like such fine detail like with the with the tip at the end so fun that's true I do think that that's much harder to do with Copics yeah I agree because the Copics are they're floppy and I don't think the tip is that thin is it I don't think so. I think they do have like a thicker side and a thinner side, but even the thin side, it's like too, too much for me. Oh, you're right. Don't they usually have like a chisel tip or something? I think so. It's, uh, I don't know. I haven't used Copics in, in a very long time, but. Gecko says, screw perspective, just eyeball it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That is what I'm doing. <laughs> Pressy is asking, how many like this to succeed as an artist or sales per day? I guess you're asking Pressy how much work it takes to feel competent. I don't know if that's the question, but but let's just answer that question. So Mia, what do you think? How how long did it take before you started to feel like, okay, I sort of know what I'm doing. Oh, like for this specifically or just like in general with art? <laughs> Let's just say in general. Yeah, I'd say like, I feel like sophomore year of college, I was kind of like, okay, like I can consistently make things that are like pretty, like pretty okay. Or like, I, uh, I know what to do if I want to start like a watercolor painting. Like I, I have the steps, I feel confident, like stuff like that but it did take like tons of practice i think i'm still kind of like flying like free falling <laughs> in the world of art though like i feel like i'm still not completely there yet but uh, yeah <laughs> you know what i think it is it also depends on what you're doing because there's some media where i'm like okay i i feel pretty good about this but there's other media or subjects where i'm like Ugh. And so it kind of never stops. Yeah, I think it's totally like different subjects. I think that's very true. 
Like, what, what do you think for you is the most challenging thing to draw? Oh, God. <laughs> That's a good question. Oh, man. I'd say, like, hmm. I'd say different perspectives. Like, if I'm doing a full scene of something, like if I'm doing character work and I have to put a character in an entire environment, like, with mm. the correct perspective, like that's pretty hard. But if I do all of those different pieces separately, that's like kind of easier. Like if I just do a character drawing or like if I just do an environment drawing, it's not as hard as if you put all three together. <laughs> so you're saying when you have to make like a full out scene? Yeah, that's pretty hard for me. <laughs> so like figure, environment, props, like all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, all that. <laughs> It is a lot. I think for me, if you're talking about figures, anything that has multiple figures, right? Yeah. Because then so many things like interact with each other. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I was helping somebody in the Discord recently and they had this composition. It was three figures and it was so hard to get them to relate and make sense with each other. It was very complicated. Chemical for you says, hey, Mia, please get two bunnies. They need a friend. Minimum dimensions for a rabbit are six QM. Maybe that's a different measurement. But yeah, you said that they need friends. <laughs> yeah, like, because, um, yeah, my dad's a veterinarian, which is really convenient. Oh, because, really? Yeah, yeah, because uh, he, he, like, is a, like, veterinary radiologist guy. So he, like, knows a bunch of stuff about animals, which is really lucky. But um he said that like most bunnies uh, prefer to be in pairs and like, because if they don't, if they're not with like a pack or different bunnies, they get really depressed and lonely. But this one particular bunny we think might be better alone. So we're gonna do a trial period first and see how it goes. But then if, the, if, uh, if he seems happy, then it might be a good permanent solution. But yeah, hopefully. He just doesn't get along with anybody, so. <laughs> Wait, your dad's a vet cardiologist? Uh, radiologist. So he does like all the x-rays and stuff. Oh, I had no idea there was such a thing. It's so specific. I know, like you'd never know unless like your dad was one of them. <laughs> but. So does he actually get to examine animals or is he mostly like in the lab doing scans and stuff? He does like a little bit of both. It's pretty cool. Like he, uh, he'll do um, like ultrasounds and stuff mm -hmm. like with the animals. So he has to like kind of calm them down and like prepare them like for them. But most of the time they do really well, which is good. <laughs> See, I don't understand how people are vets. It's like you could be treating a guinea pig and then a horse. And like, how do you know how to do that? I know, like, I have no idea. I think it's more of like, there are big animal vets, and then there are little animal vets. So I think my dad's more of like a little animal vet. But oh. my sister wants to be like a horse doctor, like one of the equestrian, like a equine people. So oh, geez. that'll be crazy. <laughs> yeah. Are you the only artist in your family? Uh, my grandparents or my both of my grandmothers are like very creative and artistic so I get it from them mostly I think oh yeah you said that um didn't you use your grandmother's watercolor set for your tarot cards yeah I did she gifted me like all these watercolors um earlier this year so I've been using those all year I, she gave she has like a lifetime supply of materials that I can use which is so awesome that's so cool because I don't have anybody in my family that's a artist at all. Like not even close. I think um, uh, I've seen your your kids' digital paintings, so they're catching up probably. <laughs> that's true. I guess I mean like my siblings and parents. Oh yeah, that makes sense. J 
Jane says, I found art as a young adult, so as a hobby, it's not a source of stress for me, except that I just ache for more time to devote to it. Oh, you and everybody. I mean, there's never enough time to do what you want. You know what I wish I had, Mia? I wish I had enough time that I could like really take my time with stuff and do it exactly as far as I want. Cause I always feel like I'm shaving off something. Like there's always something I work on and that I really want to do, but I don't do it because I don't have time. Yeah. And then it's like, uh, sometimes you have to sacrifice like the little things you do in order for the whole thing to look okay. <laughs> yeah. Which is what I end up doing a lot, which is kind of sad, but ugh. Although I think you'll find when you start working outside of school that you, you really cannot do everything A plus. Yeah, it's it's definitely like a give or take. I've even in school, like I've had to tell myself, like, you know, it's okay if like you don't make the best work in this class. Like it's it's okay. <laughs> Cause I'm totally like a perfectionist, uh anxious person in school, but you know, it's okay to like just kind of prioritize some classes over the others and things like that. I mean, you have to, you go insane if you <laughs> are actually aiming for that. It's too hard. And I mean, that's just sort of life in general. You can't do a great job on everything. Yeah, even though I want to, <laughs> but oh well. No. Even um, my mother-in-law, the bread fairy. <laughs> yeah. About her. So did you see the cat bus cake that she made? Yes, that was <laughs> incredible. Oh my God. So she drops it off at our house and we're like ooing and aahing over it. And she says to me, oh, I, I didn't tuck in these corners and you can see this one spot that's not very good and i i'm like you're insane like <laughs> yeah like look at what you made like look at that that's it was so cool but i think it just goes to show that it's like i think for a lot of artists it really never is good enough <laughs> yeah and it's always different like when it's your work like looking at it compared to somebody else's because you've been around it so much of course you're going to get tired of it and things like that i mean she's like pointing out this one spot that if you look really hard, you can find it, but most of the time you can't. <laughs> so this is interesting. Lisa says, I prefer a time crunch, forces me to focus and not overwork. Plus it's a great excuse. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a really good point. I think, yeah, like having a deadline does like, I don't know, it kicks you awake. You have to do stuff. <laughs> Oh, I would get nothing done if I didn't have deadlines. There's no chance. And I remember when I had just gotten out of school, you know how in art school, everybody's like, oh, deadlines, I hate them, they're the worst, blah, blah, blah. And then you get out and you're like, oh my God, I need a deadline. Yeah. Uh. And like assignments too. I think people like, hey, like I hate homework, but I just, I, I think I'll be okay. But like finding the motivation to do uh, like personal assignments and things like that can be kind of hard. Oh yeah. When you've got that much going on, I mean, RISD is not an easy program. I mean, they really throw a lot at you all at once. If anything, you can go through art school and just say, you know what, I never want to work that hard again. Yeah, seriously. Or, you know, something else though, I mean, I think the biggest positive is that I have had a couple times where it really was a stressful time crunch, but because I had done it in art school, I was like, oh, I can do this. It sucks and I'm gonna complain 
and it's going to be hard. It's going to make me exhausted, but I can do it. Yeah, it's kind of like you've been there before, so it's not going to be like a terrifying new thing. It's just going to be an annoying thing. <laughs> yeah, because the thing is, it's like, yes, it'll stress me out, but I don't have any doubt whether I can actually do it. Like, I know I can do it. It's just uh, not fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Rima says, I'm finding art classes to join, but I couldn't. So if I join your server... I believe there was an earlier message Rima said, I was trying to enter Discord, but it's not working. You need to have a Discord account first. So make sure you have that and then you join the server. And we do have, I think I just released it three days ago, where I actually go through step-by-step -step how to join the server. It's like a six minute video. So you might want to check that out. Okay, everybody, we would love for you to join Mia and I in the Art Prof Discord. We're having a stage session today, which is where you get to talk to us on voice. You don't have to, you can totally just listen in, but please join us in the post live stream stage channel. The invite link is in the video description below. Subscribe to our channel because we need more than 100K, right? <laughs> like a video, leave a comment, and by the way, thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters. We now have two full slides of names. Who's going to be the person to be the first name on slide number three? You know you want to be that person. So everybody, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.